Score is a game where you're trying to achieve majority control over three fishing locations in order to grab cards early that have the most points and to complete private scoring goals and win the game. Two to four players, about 20 minutes. The game itself is like a high-end product where the theme comes from the beginning all through the end, even into the rule book. The theme, the design, the high-end touch carries through. The rules themselves are very few. The thing, the rule book, is six to eight pages. Everything is very nice and oriented, and there's a lot of diagrams. This here represents the three fishing areas A, B, and C that you're trying to place majority control in. There's also going to be cards. You start with cards of value one, two, and three of different colors and different symbols. What they're going to allow you to do is to place boats onto the board to achieve your majority control. But there's also a rule that lets you one time per turn shift a boat around the board. That kind of throws a monkey wrench on what people might expect. Here what we're looking at are the private scoring conditions. You get to choose what you want and you try to meet them. And they're going to be things like having sets of cards, the most of one card, and a lot of other iterations along the way. Depending on the complexity of the goal, you're going to get different amounts of scoring points. Right here are the ships, and they are not only different colors, but different designs. And you can see that that classy touch from the box to the rulebook carries through into all the components. This here is an axe. You earn this when your card matches the card above it, and it's a tiebreaker uh, when deciding how to take cards at the highest points. These cards come out later in the game. These are not necessarily placement cards of ships, but what they do is let you shift the cards around. So the ships give you majority control. These let you shift the cards like a six into an area where you have majority control or out of an area where someone else has the control. So there's a lot of ways you can play it. Every level of the game has something you can manipulate. To start the game, you're going to randomly put out the higher cards into the three fishing zones, and then you're going to deal out the rest to the players. Here I have a three player game set up, so that means everyone's going to end up with six cards. The one, two, and threes, the four, five, and sixes are distributed. We might not all have the same cards, so we have to be wary and engaged on every single turn. So what we're looking at here is the first turn in the game, and this person is deciding that they're going to place a blue card down into the field. Now blue doesn't actually give you any ships to place down, but what it does do, because they are two blues stacked one against the other, it's going to allow this person to get an axe, and an axe is going to be a tiebreaker for choosing expensive cards at the end of the game. Essentially you get axes up, and then you flip them down as you go. So the more you use your benefit of having axes, your power to use them actually dwindles with time. The next player is going to place a green. So they are also going to get an axe. However, the green card does allow you to place ships down. So when they do so, they're going to put a ship into that territory, giving them majority control of that territory. However, they don't want the four or the three card. They want the six. On every turn, you're allowed to shift a ship so they shifted it over to where the blues were for higher points and this here what we're looking at is an end game condition for three players a lot of cars are out all the boats are out and one by one you're going to resolve the different areas based on control now just for example i started with the area that's closest to me and in this situation what you're going to see is that the yellow ship has the majority control so they are going to select first picking the highest card is not necessarily the best idea especially later on but for this turn, we're going to go for the six. It is the highest card here, but it's also going to help us match our card, which tells us that we should have one of every single card. You can see this has a fish symbol on it. Down from that, we have a gray and a pink who are tied. Now, this player here does not have an axe. The other person has two axes up, so they get to go first. That's their tiebreaker. Again, they're looking, not necessarily the highest one, but in this case, the uh, clawed one, the red five, does work. It's not only five points, but if we look at their secret score condition, having the claw symbol will help them achieve their goal for points. And you're going to do this for every single section in the game. A, then B, then C, working your way down. So there is an order to how you have to resolve it. So there's a lot of thought that goes on that you might not see up front or in the first few games. But that is score 20 minutes in. It really is like a high-end parlor game. If you like abstract games, I suggest you give it a look. And if you have questions about the rules, I'm happy to help you. Once again, friends, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.